series where I get to talk to different fathers and today I get to speak to the Honorable uh, Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, Ronald Lamula, who I regard as a brother, as someone who inspires me personally. But today we're not talking to you as, as the minister, we're talking to you as a father, someone who is respected in the community and, and so forth. Are you well? No, 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 very well. Good, to, good to finally have this conversation uh, uh, with you. Um, how many kids do you have? Two. Two. Boy and a girl or? Boys. Two boys. So this series is really about having open and frank conversations with fathers about fatherhood. And I think it's important to have these conversations because what we've uh, realized, what I've realized through the different conversations is that there's so much to learn. There are so many fathers who are going through different challenges in their own spaces, whether single, married, divorced, widowed, it doesn't matter. A father is a father. And we don't limit fatherhood to biology, by the way. Renata Khotsirtse Gore Malume is a father figure. And Tate Mokholu can be a father figure. Even Tate next door uh, is a father figure. But a lot has changed since then, how we were raised. Uh, we were raised by a community. What does fatherhood mean to you? Yeah, obviously, it's um, kind of a humbling experience. Yeah. Because um, you have these young ones who now bring a new dimension to your life. Yeah. They have a lot of energy. Yeah. And, so it means to impart them grow or grow young guys who will be part of the future of our country. Yeah, absolutely. And as you have said, it's not just uh, about the kids I have, it's yeah. also the communities where I stay, yeah. where I come from, where I still try and inspire sure. the young ones in that community sure. through various initiatives, yeah. in foundation, in sports, and so forth. So it's broader than just, just yeah. yeah, as you have said earlier. Yeah. yeah. And so I wanted to find out from you, is, is your father still alive? Yeah, no, he's still alive. And how's the relationship between you and him? When you look back at how he raised you and how he's probably become softer the older he becomes. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> he was more firm yeah. and so forth. Uh, but now he's, uh, so he looks like a sweet. Uh, yeah. I sometimes wish that. The type of love you shows to my kids is what you had that. Yeah, <laughs> I've got the same. I've got the same experience with my father. My yeah. father was extremely strict, yeah. very hard on me, and now I'm realizing, oh, this man is actually soft. How he yeah. relates to my kids, yeah. his like grandfather now is older and so forth. Have Have you changed how you are raising your kids to the way that he raised you? Is there a difference? Yeah, yeah. What, what What is the difference? Oh yes, from also from time to time, I tell them I love them. Yeah. For example, he has yeah. never told me. Have you ever, have you ever told him you love him? No. <laughs> he never told me that. <laughs> I've never. It's difficult even for me to yeah. to take out such things to him. So, I, I also struggled with my dad. Yeah. The other day I was interviewing him for yeah. the series and I said to him, I'm 42. Are you aware that you've never told me you love me? And I've never told I know you love me. Yeah. I have no doubt about that. Yeah. But because of how you've raised us to be, you know, a man can't cry, that, yeah. that ethos yeah. that a man doesn't show weakness. Yeah. But I told him that day that I love him for the first yeah. time. Maybe you must do the same. Yeah. Phone your dad up and say, listen, time up. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, nah. I will try. You'll try. Yeah, will I mean, it feel weird for you though? Yeah, I know it is going to be very weird. I mean, at my age, it's starting now. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be easy. <laughs> so, um, your, your, your relationship with your kids, how, how is it? I think it's a. Um, it's fine. I yeah. try my best, uh, although with a extremely busy yeah. schedule. I yeah. try where I get an hour to see when they play. Yeah. Try to teach them how to ride a bicycle. Yeah. But it must be difficult for you because you are you are a public figure. You are a, a minister. You, you are a government official. Are they are they able to separate your uh, duty, uh, your country duty? To, to, to being a father, are they able to distinguish that this is uh, our dad or what's one for one? Uh, obviously, especially they're still young. So ah, okay, they, they, so they don't, doesn't really... They don't really yeah. know exactly. It's just the one who's now becoming older, right. who's grown up, who I think is beginning to understand see something might yeah. be happening because he always says, yeah, my dad work for, for, for a more person. <laughs> so I suspect he's beginning to... <laughs> to understand. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then what I wanted to know now is, so we've started a, a, a group in terms of um, social media. There's a big presence. I think we're sitting on plus minus 10,000 followers who are fathers. But also we've got a Telegram group where fathers kind of uh, voice out their challenges, their concerns. They want advice from other fathers who've probably traveled the path before them. There are fathers who are talking about 
uh, the dynamic that they have with their kids. Some of them have got kids outside and they're struggling to have their relationship because maybe their mother doesn't want to give them access. But then again, there's also fathers who are uh, in prison. Uh, they're serving time and they don't have the opportunity to be able to spend time with their kids. Um, and for me, what I've realized is that our challenges are so vast that you can't deal with everything at once. Um, yeah. But we, we are trying to push a, a movement where we try and support one father at a time. You know, it's, 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 it's got to grow organically as, as we get to uh, allow men to open up. Because it's not, it's not easy for men to open up, yeah. as you would know. Um, do you think a movement like this is, is necessary, number one? Number two, do you think that this is something that might change the landscape of South African men, especially when it comes to issues around GBV? Yeah, I think it is not only necessary, it's an imperative that must happen. Because yeah. one of the things I have observed during interaction with some of the inmates, uh, including interacting with friends yeah. and people in society, is that there is a gap between ourselves and our parents. Yeah. And for example, with me, Although my parents can say this and that, but the, the circumstances under which I live is completely different Correct. to my father's circumstances. Yeah. And even for a doctor, for example, you find that you are the first doctor in the, in the family. family. Yeah. You are the moneyed one yeah. uh, as a lawyer yeah. or as a whatever that you could be doing. True. So your weight goes. Yeah. Who calls you to order? Your father. It's difficult for your father sometimes yeah. yes, to say, but this guy is the one. Yeah. He's a breadwinner. Yeah, even your uncles and others, they cooled and so forth, but yeah. it's not as easy as it was before. True. When you're a kid or you're not a breadwinner. True. So your friends in your circumstances, for example, as doctors, it yeah. becomes easy for you to engage and say, but hey, hey, yeah. TT, you are now out of court. Yeah. You didn't do Yeah, because we are, we are equals. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And even myself, my friends could be able to say, but I'm True. this is now. Out of, out, line, of, yeah. out of line, you yeah. can't do this and that. So I think that this movement presents that kind of an opportunity where True. it was almost living the same type of a midly mm -hmm. um, a, a lifestyle, yeah. could be able to call each other to order, but also they can grow whatever positive vibe, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. sports, or whatever they may want to do with that mm -hmm. kind of a movement, which cannot be done with the some of the obviously uh, family members who could sure. really guide you because uh, my observation is that there's that gap between yeah. yeah and we're trying to close that gap yeah so I want to talk to you about GBV specifically yeah. the 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 biggest or highest perpetrators of GBV are men and that's a fact we all know that how do we then create those conversations with amongst fathers to get to the root cause of what actually causes um, some of these GBV issues in men yeah, I think, as I started, I said, you know, my father never told me. Yeah. Me. So yeah. I realized it myself. I was not aware. But I realized it one day when the Department of Justice and Correctional Services had a workshop with the NGO, I think it's called Digging Out Yeah. Something. Yeah, very well. Yeah, so they, were, they asked the whole hall in Kimbad amongst men. Who yeah. has your father told you he loves you? No man. Not even a single one. Not even a single one. So you can see that it starts from the family, starts from that fatherly care, yeah. motherly care, and then it goes to society, how yeah. the society treats you and so forth. Because the first goal should be to prevent it. Yeah. Once it has happened, then it goes to the criminal justice system, but yeah. someone has felt the pain. We True. should prevent the pain from happening. From by, the by 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 ensuring that the young boys are are cultured in a manner that they are not going to commit GBV. That's true. That's true. So I also want to get to a point someday where I can actually speak to some of these fathers who are in prison, especially some of those that are about to be released, because I think the biggest difficulty that they face once they come back into society is the judgment is still there. Uh, they are unable to get jobs. They are unable to you know, fulfill their fatherly uh, roles because of how judgmental society becomes. Do you think there's an opportunity for um, this movement to also engage with them whilst they're, they're, they're in there to prepare them so that when they come out, at least they know that there's a platform that they can use to be able to babble, if you want to call it that. Yeah, I think there could be. Do you remember it in the prisons or in the correctional facilities we have something called community corrections? Yeah. Which facilitates dialogue between the offender 
and the victims, including mm -hmm. the issues of community integration, which yeah. includes his family and the community at large. So there could be that space of that kind of an engagement. But, and it does happen now, mm -hmm. but um, maybe with your expertise about Faras, it could also go deeper in terms mm -hmm. of the relations with the kids, mm -hmm. how will that be managed uh, going forward and mm -hmm. so forth as a father figure in his or her family. Mm -hmm. But that is the kind of space that could be utilized. Because mm -hmm. I, can, I, can, I can just imagine, I can just picture this, uh, your child is in school and they are asking you to talk about what your father does. Yeah. And your father happens to be in prison. I mean, how do you also curb such things where, where the kids don't have to feel the brunt yeah. of the father's actions and, and, and all those things? Yeah. So before I finish, I'm, I'm going to ask you two questions. Uh, the first one is, um, your father's still alive, you're fortunate just like I am. If there's one thing you would like to say to your father that you've never had an opportunity to say to him, and he's gonna watch this. What will it be? <laughs> I know he's gonna watch it. <laughs> I'll make sure he gets it. I'll find him. <laughs> he only watch news and oh, and and, and, and so 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 well, maybe yeah. you'll reciprocate and comment <laughs> once you posted this. <laughs> and then the, the last question I wanted to ask you is, 20 years from today, um, if you had an opportunity, well, you do now, um, to say something to your kids that they will watch 20 years from today, what would that be? Is that they should be the best of themselves and do the world good. Yeah, that's all I can say. Yeah. Do the world good. Yeah. Do the world good. Yeah. I think that's a powerful statement. Yeah. It sounds simple, but it's actually powerful because yeah. it if if we all as individuals did the world good, the world would be a better place. Yes. I'd like to thank you for your time uh, as a brother, as someone I respect, as a minister, um, for actually even agreeing to do this interview because I know that you know some people might say, nah, I don't want to talk about that side of my life or that part, but I think it's important. Um, to also show leadership that you are not only a leader in politics but also a leader in your in your personal space. And I thank you for your time, Minister. Sure, thank thank you. Work. Work. And uh, I can't wait for you to jump ship and join Pirates. Then yeah, it's team. you who must drink. No, 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 I used to be a team. I actually left them. <laughs> no, I felt abused. You must come back. No, I felt like I was, there. I was in a peaceful relationship. <laughs> and since I've joined Pirates, I must say, life has been. <coughs> Nothing short of glorious. <laughs> you know we've got stars, right? Anyway. Yeah, you must come back. Ours is not glorious, but we're hopeful. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you are business of hope. You must. Yeah, business of hope. All pun intended. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. Thanks, my brother. Yo, what an insightful conversation I've just had with the Minister of Correctional Services and Justice, um, Honourable Ronald Lamula. He's never said he loves his dad. This was his first time. Can you see the power of the Amatama Network? How many timers out there have never told their kids they love them? And how many of you timers out there have never heard your dad say they love you? Maybe this is an opportunity for you to phone your dad and tell him, I love you. Kyaung nga nyo timer. Nyak nga nyo timer. Let's spread the love, my timer, man. Spread the love. Don't believe a word they say. Turn around and walk away. Make your world a better stay. Listen to your daddy.